Hey everyone, my name is Alexander, and Minecraft Live 2023 was a few days ago. So today I'm going to be going over everything they revealed at Minecraft Live and letting you know what I think of it. Well, actually, that's a lie. I'm not going to go over everything, because I'm pretty sure you'll only want to hear about the new updates. Not R2-D2, some weird-looking animals, or a guy on a keyboard. So, first of all, some new things were revealed for Minecraft Legends. The first of which is the Frog Mount, which can apparently jump highest and swim fastest of all the mounts, which sounds pretty useful. It's also really cool to see that they're bringing back the frog mount, because the sounds for it have been in the game files since Legends released. I'm not sure what I think of the frog mount's design, though. It's cute, but something just feels a bit weird about it to me. Maybe it's because the head is so big, or how the legs move? Overall, though, the frog mount is pretty cool. The next new thing that was shown for Minecraft Legends is a new piglin, the Piglin Clanger which attacks by smashing its symbols together, creating a shockwave that seems to knock back, deal damage to, and stun your troops. So this piglin seems to be a pretty nasty opponent. The piglin clanger also comes in all three horde variants, horde of the hunt, horde of the spore, and horde of the bastion. And I love everything about this piglin. The design is really cool, especially on the horde of the spore variant, and the way it attacks is really interesting and unique. I especially like the sound it makes when it attacks. There's also a new piglin structure called the Air Chopper, which blows air and nether spores at you and your troops. This seems to knock your troops back and deal some damage to them. I'm also wondering if the Air Chopper will be able to heal other piglins, because it blows out nether spores, the exact method used by spore medics to heal other piglins. And it even has a spore medic controlling it. If that's the case, this could be a really nasty structure, especially in Horde of the Spore bases, which are made up of lots of elevated platforms that the Air Chopper could blow your troops off. The Air Chopper is shown in Horde of the Spore and Horde of the Bastion variants, but we don't currently know if Horde of the Hunt bases can have it too. And just like the Piglin Clanger, I love this new structure. Everything about it really helps to give the Piglins that industrial feeling they have in Minecraft Legends, and I think that's great. They also showed a new ally that's going to be added to Minecraft Legends, the Witch. And I love the design of the Witches. The massive hat and those little capes just make them look absolutely adorable. Witches are able to attack by throwing potions at their enemies from, I think, a short range. These potions deal area damage and seem to give the enemies a poison effect for a while, so they seem like they could be pretty useful allies. I'm wondering how they're going to fit the witches into the story though, and when they'll be unlocked because the warrior illagers are only introduced just before the end of the main game. And the final thing shown for the Minecraft Legends update is the Witch's Cauldron, which is a player structure that can apparently share bubbly power with your other allies, so we don't really know what it will do. We know the size of the area that it can affect mobs in, but we don't know how it'll affect. Them. Personally, I'm hoping that you'll be able to build different types of witches' cauldrons using different resources. So, for example, one made of redstone could increase the attack power of your allies, one made of diamond could speed them up, one made of iron could make them more resistant to damage, and I'm not sure what coal could do. Maybe make them explode on death? I think if the Witch's Cauldron does something like that, it could add to the PvP in Minecraft Legends a lot, with some interesting counters to some of the most dangerous tactics, like using the Firsts and Redstone Launchers. So, all in all, this is looking like a pretty solid update for Minecraft Legends. Now, onto the new stuff for Minecraft! The first thing they showed is that they've started working on bringing Minecraft into real life even genetically modifying some animals to turn them into real-life Minecraft mobs. I think this is a great direction for them to take, and I'm looking forward to the day that an Enderman starts ripping apart my house in real life. I am, of course, joking. I know it's not real. 
the first thing they really showed is, well, not something they showed, but they talked about it, and it's the theme of the 1.21 update, which is combat, adventures, and tinkering, which is pretty interesting. The combat part is making me hope that there might be quite a few new hostile mobs in this update, which I would love, since my favourite type of mob is the type that wants to kill me. Adventures are also great, since adventuring is one of the biggest parts of Minecraft. And then there's tinkering. I'm not quite sure what they mean by that, but I'm assuming it's redstone stuff, based on some of the new blocks they've revealed for this update, which I'll be getting to right now. Because in 1.21, they're going to be adding a brand new redstone block called the Crafter. An auto-crafter in vanilla Minecraft. This is revolutionary. There are just so many possibilities with this, it almost makes my mind melt just thinking about it. And if the function wasn't already amazing, the block looks really cool too. With that funny face similar to the dispenser, dropper and observer, the opening mouth, the redstone making the crafting grid shape, it's absolutely brilliant. This alone probably makes 1.21 one of the best updates we've had in quite a while, in my opinion, and that's going up against some really good ones, like Trails and Tails and Caves and Cliffs. Next, we've got a new structure. This one is called the Trial Chamber. Trial Chambers are big, procedurally generated underground structures that start with a main corridor, and then branch off into lots of smaller corridors, connected to supply rooms and rooms where you fight monsters. Trial chambers also seem to have some traps hidden around them. To me, this concept of combat rooms and supply rooms is very similar to the tower from Minecraft Dungeons, which is a really cool idea. Trial chambers are mostly made of some new decorative blocks, which I'll be getting to soon. At the moment, I'm not really sure what to make of the architecture of the trial chambers. At some points, I thought it felt a bit bland, like in the entrance, the corridor with the supply chest, and the first combat room. But there were also some really cool parts, like the main corridor and the second combat room. So I think some of the parts feeling bland might actually have been because we were only shown those small areas, not what was around them. Overall though, I think the Trial Chamber is a pretty cool new structure, and I'm excited to find out what we haven't been shown about it. Now we've got quite a few new decorative blocks made of copper and tough. Let's start with the tough blocks. The new types of tough blocks that I can find are tough bricks, Tough Brick Stairs, Chiseled Tough Bricks, Polished Tough, and Polished Tough Walls. But I think we'll probably also get Tough Brick Slabs, Tough Brick Walls, Polished Tough Stairs, and Polished Tough Slabs. So, what do I think of the new Tough Blocks? I really like the look of the Tough Bricks and Chiseled Tough Bricks. The Polished Tough also looks good, but I'm not sure how I feel about the Polished Tough Walls. They feel a bit strange to me for some reason. Maybe it's just because I'm not used to walls being so plain. It almost looks like a concrete wall. Overall though, the tough blocks are cool. A very unexpected but welcome addition. Now for the new copper blocks, which are really interesting. We've got copper grates, something that looks like chiseled copper, copper doors, copper trapdoors, and copper bulbs. Some of these blocks are shown with exposed, weathered, and or oxidised variants, so I think it's safe to say that all of them will have the oxidising feature that the existing copper blocks have. All of these blocks are a huge surprise to me, because there are completely new types of blocks, the grates and bulbs, and new doors and trap doors that aren't made of wood and I love the look of all of them. The chiselled copper, which I originally thought was just an unlit copper bulb, but after checking again, definitely isn't, is a really nice looking block. The copper grates are also really good, and will definitely make for some interesting new floor designs. I'm actually really hoping that they might make some other types of grates now, like iron grates. 
The copper doors and copper trap doors look brilliant too, and seem to behave like wooden doors instead of iron doors, so you'll be able to open them with your hands instead of redstone power only. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? You decide, but personally I think it's pretty good. And then there are the copper bulbs, a new light source, and possibly an invaluable redstone component. First of all, let's talk about them as a light source. They have a great design, and I actually think they're the first light source that actually uses another type of block as a base, which is really cool to see. Copper bulbs also have an interesting feature where they get dimmer the more oxidised they are, which is cool, but I think it could be a bit annoying that they have to be a different colour to be a different brightness. Because what if you want your oxidised copper build to be brightly lit, or your non-oxidised copper build to be more dimly lit? All in all though, I think the copper bulb is a great new light source. Now to talk about how it could be used as a redstone component. Copper bulbs seem to be lit differently to things like redstone lamps, where instead of having to have a constant redstone signal going into them to stay lit, they just need a pulse to be turned on or off. This was mentioned briefly on the Minecraft.net article, and shown in the background of Minecraft Live, where the copper bulb lamp posts in the town didn't have levers connected to them, but were still on. This is already great for building, but it could be even better for redstone, because if, and it's not confirmed yet, I'm just speculating, but if you can use comparators to detect whether a copper bulb is on or off, redstone toggles could be the smallest they've ever been, consisting of just two blocks. Now, let me be clear, I'm not a redstoner, so I'm not entirely sure, but I think this kind of thing could previously only be done with quite a few rather expensive blocks, like hoppers and dispensers. So, if it can all be done with just a copper bulb and a comparator, that could be much more compact, and much cheaper. So if that ends up being the case, copper bulbs could be extremely useful for all types of building. Next, we've got a new type of spawner, the Trial Spawner. Trial Spawners spawn a limited amount of mobs, and once the mobs are defeated, drop some rewards and go on cooldown for a while. The rewards that were shown on Minecraft Live were some emeralds and a diamond, which are actually some pretty good rewards. Another feature that the Trial Spawner has, which is one I really like, is that the amount of mobs spawned and the amount of items dropped scale to match the amount of players nearby, resulting in a fair fight and fair rewards for any amount of people trying the challenge. I love the concept of this new block, and I also think it looks really cool, especially that particle effect when summoning mobs. I also think that the trial spawners could make some good flaws in creative mode builds if you can stop them from spawning mobs. There are a couple of things that I'm wondering about of the trial spawner though, like if the blocks on the floor are just part of the structure to show what mob is being spawned, or if they actually determine the mob that gets spawned. Because on Minecraft Live, the ones that spawned strays had packed ice blocks around them, and the ones that spawned slimes had moss blocks around them. The other thing I'm wondering is if the trial spawners only give rewards on the first attempt, or if they get worse over time, or if that's what you get every time, because I think getting the same rewards like diamonds every time could end up being quite overpowered, especially if it allows you to make diamond farms. But overall, the trial spawners are definitely a really cool addition to the game. That's all of the blocks covered, now for the new mob. This mob is called the Breeze, and seems to be an air version of the Blaze. Breeze attack by shooting projectiles called wind charges at their enemies. Wind charges explode on impact, but these explosions just knock back nearby mobs. Only a direct hit from the wind charge will deal damage. The wind charge's explosion can also interact with redstone components, like dispensers and trapdoors. Breeze also have the ability to jump around the arena. 
Also, just to clarify, because people seem confused about this, the Breeze isn't a mini-boss, or at least hasn't been confirmed to be. As far as we're currently aware, it's just a normal mob like the Blaze. So, what do I think of the Breeze? I think it's great! The idea of a Blaze based on another element is really cool, and I love the interactions with redstone blocks, which I'm sure will be used in some really interesting mini-games in the future. It's also really cool to see that they're starting to add to the different families of mobs again, because the last time they did that was back in 1.17 with everyone's favourite mob, the Gloat Squid. Of course, the Allays were added in 1.19 and are related to Vexes, but they were nothing like Vexes when they were first added, so I don't think they really count. There are a couple of things that I find weird with the Breeze, though, one of which is that the texture feels really smooth, mainly on the head, and it seems pretty out of place. I'm not sure there's a single other thing in the game that has a texture with so much of a gradient. I think that's probably just something I'll have to get used to, though. The other thing is that the Breeze has animations, which isn't a problem by itself, I think it's great that the new mobs are getting animations, but it starts getting problematic with the Breeze because it's related to, and clearly meant to be compared to, the Blaze, which doesn't have animations. This makes the normally good feature of having animations really backfire on the Breeze, in my opinion, because it makes the differences between old Minecraft and new Minecraft really obvious, and massively amplifies that it feels modded feeling that we tend to get when new mobs are initially revealed. Apart from those small issues, though, I think the Breeze is a great mob with some really interesting features. So, overall, this update is looking like a really good one so far. And because of the new things that have been shown for this update, and the fact that it currently hasn't been publicly named, I think I'm going to unofficially call it the Trials and Tiles update until the name is actually revealed. Now, the next thing to talk about is the mob vote, but before I get to that, I want to mention something that I found problematic with how the new Minecraft features were presented in Minecraft Live. This time, they did it very differently from the last few years, because instead of showing videos of the new features and then explaining them in quite a lot of detail like they used to, this time they tried to turn it into a little story. And I really don't like that, because it didn't give any of the features enough focus and meant they couldn't explain the features anywhere near as much as I think they should have done. Especially the really important feature of the copper bulb being toggleable, which they didn't even mention. So, I really hope they go back to how they did it previously in next year's Minecraft Live. Now to talk about the mob vote. First of all, for any of you stop the mob vote people who might be watching, I've got some good news and some bad news for you, not including the mob vote not being cancelled because that was obviously never going to happen. First, the good news. Vu has confirmed that the losing mobs do actually have a chance of coming back. Don't feel too bad for the penguin. Remember our little frog friends didn't win the vote either, but they still managed to up their way into the game. This was actually confirmed before by one of the developers on Twitter, but that obviously isn't very easy to find. Now for the bad news, Vu has absolutely destroyed you. I have to say, this year we've been amazed by the massive participation in the mob vote. Your passion and energy inspire us to keep building. I don't know if this was a deliberate jab at the people trying to stop the mob vote, but I think it's absolutely hilarious. Easily one of the highlights of this year's Minecraft Live for me. Now, you're probably wondering what I voted for. I voted for the crab, but it was actually a really tough decision between the crab and the penguin, because they're both really useful and really cute. You may be surprised by this, because as you'll know if you watched the video where I reacted to the reveal of the penguin, I wasn't a huge fan of it at first. 
but it's actually really grown on me since then. At first, I, and I think a lot of other people, didn't really realise how useful a penguin would be, and I think quite a lot of people still think that it would have been useless, but I beg to differ. Crossing oceans is one of the most time-consuming parts of Minecraft, and you usually have to do it multiple times in a row. You've got to do it twice if you're just going from and to your base, you've got to do it four times just to get a pair of animals or villagers across the ocean to breed, and you've got to do it way more if you want to transport items between bases. So, penguins speeding that up would actually have been really useful. I know a lot of people have used nether ice roads as a reason for why penguins aren't good, but those take ages to build. Penguins are instant. So yeah, I would have been really happy with either the crab or the penguin winning. I probably wouldn't have been so happy with the armadillo winning though, since even if the wolf armor provided as much protection as diamond horse armor, it still wouldn't really have made wolves good enough to use. So, the winning mob! Yes, soon to join Minecraft, the winning mob for the 2023 Minecraft Live mob vote is... The Armadillo! Yeah, I must admit, that didn't go how I was expecting. And this is actually the first mob vote that the mob I voted for has lost. Still though, I'm fine with the armadillo winning, and you never know, maybe the wolf armor will surprise me. I've also seen a lot of people saying that the vote was rigged using a bot, but I think even if it was affected by a bot, the armadillo still won legitimately. The two main reasons I've seen people give for it being rigged, other than the vulnerabilities that people have found in the voting system, are that so many people voted, but the vote was open for longer than the last one, and I'm pretty sure Chinese players were also able to vote this time, so that makes perfect sense, and that almost all unofficial YouTube and Twitter polls were won by the crab. But obviously not everyone will have voted on those, especially children, who I imagine would find the armadillo most appealing. Also, if I recall correctly, someone from Mojang did say that they managed to catch the bots before they could cause too many problems, so I think it's safe to say the armadillo won fair and square. So, now that I've gone over everything that's been confirmed for 1.21, it's time to talk about what else I'm hoping for, because, just like last year, this is only the stuff that they've already completed, or very nearly completed, and, if you remember from last year, none of the biggest features of the Trails and Tales update, like the armor trims, cherry groves, and archaeology, were revealed at Minecraft Live, so if this is anything like last year, this update could actually be massive. So the first thing I'm hoping for, and actually expecting in this case, is at least one other structure. Because on the Minecraft Live article on Minecraft.net, they actually said that the Trial Chamber is one of the new structures being developed. Of course, this could just be a weird use of words, but I think it's much more likely that there actually will be one or more structures in this update which would work perfectly with my next hope, more elemental blazes. We've got a fire blaze and a wind blaze now, so how about an earth and or water blaze? This would work perfectly if they actually are going to add more structures, because there could be a new blaze variant for each. Another thing I'm hoping for is for one or more losing mob vote mobs to return. After this whole stop the mob vote thing, I think it's a perfect opportunity for Mojang to try to remind Minecraft players that the mobs aren't gone forever by adding one of the losers. Some of the content in this update also gives some of the losing mobs a perfect reason to come back. The new copper and tough blocks line up perfectly with the golems, and a new blaze type being added could give the wildfire a chance to return. Jeb did say that the losing mobs from the Phantom's vote would never return, but a lot of things have changed since then, and the wildfire did make it into Minecraft Dungeons, so it making a return here too isn't too far-fetched. 
Something else I'm hoping for is a new boss, because it's been ages since the last boss was added, and there are only two in the game. Because no, Wardens, Ravagers, Evokers, and Elder Guardians are not bosses. The Warden is a natural disaster, and the rest are just strong mobs. The Trial Chamber is also the perfect place to add a new boss, since one of 1.21's themes is combat, the Trial Chamber is a massive structure, and the whole point of it is to challenge players. Maybe the boss could even be the Breezes version of the Wildfire. Another thing I'm hoping for is a new biome, or an update to an old one. The last two major updates added new biomes with new trees, so it's very possible that this update will be the same. Especially considering the fact that one of this update's themes is adventures. Also, the armadillo was one of the mobs in the mob vote, and it lives in savannas, and real ones eat insects. And one of the biome votes had an updated savanna that would have included termites. So I think an update to savannas would make a lot of sense in this update. Something else I'm hoping for is some changes to combat. Well, I'm not sure about hoping for, because I like the current combat. But I think it would make sense for the update with combat as one of its themes to make some changes to combat. Especially considering the fact that Jeb had actually been working on some combat changes at one point. And the final thing I'm hoping for is old mobs getting animations. This is obviously a tall order, so I'm not expecting it. But old mobs getting new animations, specifically things like attack animations, would be a great change, especially considering the addition of the Breeze and it having animations, while its cousin the Blaze does not. They did also mention that they're trying to update old features too, so it's not impossible. So, there we go, that's everything. What do you think of the new features, and what other features are you hoping for? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. See ya!